The Electric Information Age book is a phrase that was used by uh, people in the late 1960s and early 1970s to describe an experiment that was taking place in the domain of mass media uh, communications. Uh, and by Electric Information Age, what they were referring to uh, were, was what today we would call the sort of first wave of cyber culture. As computing moved out of uh, those research centers where it was born, largely during the World War II period, and increasingly transformed business practices, began to invade areas of society. Um, the whole question of what it, its impact might be in the realm of culture of society became increasingly felt and acute, particularly as new forms of media arose and developed in importance. Um, particularly television. Uh, the 1960s was an era of where television really emerged as a kind of dominant media form. There was an acute sense that somehow those more traditional forms, those traditional cultural containers and vectors like uh, forms of print culture, the magazine, the book, particularly the paperback book, books that were associated with ephemerality, not with long duration, industrial paperbacks, uh, there was a strong sense that those genres and media would have to reinvent themselves to somehow become part of this new model of cultural communication in society that was associated with, uh, in a kind of loose way, with, um, with cyber culture, but connected to the emergence of live media like uh, television. And so it's in that context that um, the emergence of media theory itself, uh, as embodied by Marshall McLuhan in particular, uh, of course the 1960s of the period when McLuhan moves from being a professor at the University of Toronto, whose works are read by a rather small audience, to becoming a celebrity worldwide, uh, a celebrity whose books, starting with understanding media, appear on bestseller lists. Um, but it's really a, a single book that uh, crystallizes this moment, and that's a book that illustrates the very phrase, Electric Information Age book. And that book is the book, The Medium is the Massage. Um, the Medium is the Massage, as you can see, was an industrial paperback. It was published by Bantam Books in 1967. And um, The Medium is the Massage was an attempt to literally take McLuhan's thought, the, the kind of thinking about these emerging currents within uh, society and culture that were uh, theorized in understanding media, and to translate them in an, into a new kind of object, a kind of multimedia book that would respond to the challenge, the competition, if you like, of live media. And The Medium is the Massage was not a book that McLuhan wrote. It was, even though you see his name as author next to another name, um, in reality, uh, Medium is the Massage was a remix of McLuhan's thought in a new kind of graphic, typographic collage, montage style, largely created by uh, Quentin Fiore, who's listed as the co-author here, a graphic artist. But alongside Quentin Fiore, somebody who's also listed on the title page, Jerome Agel, listed here as the coordinator of the book. And Agel and Fiore, together really tried to invent a new kind of medium of communications, uh, it, a kind of television era book, a book that makes argument through the crisscrossing of images and text, that tries to um, experiment with what a paperback book might look like that has the sort of feeling of liveness almost, being almost like a kind of television representation of uh, the thought of a major theorist thinker of the period. And Marshall McLuhan largely played a kind of uh, a secondary role in the genesis of the project. Uh, but this was the era in which McLuhan was actually translating his own thought into uh, television appearances, consulting work with businesses, with in a whole range of domains. I'm interested in this phenomenon because I think it represents the beginning of a kind of crisis, you might say, in traditional print culture that the arrival of the second cyber culture, of the kind of transformations that pers the personal computing revolution and its, uh, the emergence of increasingly hi either hybrid forms of publishing between the digital and the print 
model. Uh, but also, of course, the whole world of experimentation with e-books, with electronic publishing, with new models of disseminating knowledge, of representing knowledge. And uh, for me, the Electronic Information Age book is a kind of moment in the genesis, the kind of evolutionary narrative that takes us from the first cyber culture to the second cyber culture, to the cyber culture that informs our own era, in a sense. Um, so the, the book itself, this, the um, object that, this is a collaboration with a graphic designer, just like the McLuhan book has Quentin Fiore as the co-author, uh, the Electric Information Age book, which is this book that um, my colleague, uh, my collaborator Adam Michaels and I published in 2012, um, uh, published, is uh, itself a kind of book whose message, whose content and whose form, if you like, are deeply intertwined. Just as Fiore and Agel tried to make, translate McLuhan's message into a message that, however complex, speaks to an audience that's a hybrid audience, an audience that uh, thinks in terms of images, uh, reads pages uh, by skimming, not by just by linear, close uh, kinds of forms of reading. It's a, a book that plays with the conventions of the book itself. You can see here, there's a, I just passed, passed by a, a page where you can see the thumbs of the reader inserting themselves into the page. Um, similarly, um, Adam and I produced a scholarly book, but it's a scholarly book that uses the same visual conventions in a kind of pastiche, a uh, kind of playful way, uh, simply as a, a, an attempt to build a bridge between the conversation about the future of communications, particularly print-based communications, that was taking place in the late 1960s and the present of that conversation. And it's a very lively conversation. So what should a book look like in a world where digitally native forms of knowledge are increasingly the norm. That's the question that in a sense we wanted to engage in through the creation not only of a scholarly project that excavates this otherwise largely forgotten moment of experimentation with a genre of paperbacks that had a successful life during the, the late 60s and early 70s, but mostly died out in the, in the 1970s. By the middle of the 1970s, they died out. Um, we excavate that historical moment, but we excavate it with an eye towards the present and the future. Um, and it's in that context that um, the Electric Information Age book, our book, is part of a larger conversation, not only among designers and scholars in fields like my own who are interested in producing experimental books and rethinking what a book looks like, uh, in the present, but also in experimenting with crossovers between media. So, for instance, this book is paired with a series of other experiments we've done. We've published a series of pamphlets that are supplements to the Electric Information Age book. We have um, actually um, carried out a continued an experiment that was already part of the uh, Medium is the Massage, which is we actually produced a live stage version which is a, um, in the form also of a vinyl record, a limited additional vinyl record that is a, a kind of, it's not really a remix, but it's a performed version of the argument of the book that um, mimics, plays with the fact that McLuhan, Agel, and Fiore had done an album version of the uh, original medium is the massage, in part because they had this feeling that somehow the boundary line between the book as an artifact and other media was now increasingly porous, that it was impossible to stop a book sort of at the boundary lines of its cover, and that sound, uh, even live sound media, were somehow part of the larger picture of, of um, how knowledge was being increasingly conveyed in contemporary society. So it's that full sort of spectrum of possibilities that um, interested us both in terms of the historical project, but also this present kind of challenge, which is a challenge that I before de defined in terms of knowledge design. What does knowledge look like in the 21st century? What forms should it take? What's the relationship between traditional print-based or textual forms of argumentation and other modes of argumentation? The use of visualizations that are generated through large data sets, the use of video, uh, uh, 
what if in the apparatus of an argument we include the entire archive that we work with, uh, much like scientists publish their data sets? What does a world look like where scholarship assumes the form of curating an entire archival repository? Um, what does a world look like where forms of argument that are scholarly, that are research-based, archivally based, um, manifest themselves in a kind of process where design elements are a key feature of that act of communication going far beyond textual, textual modes of argumentation. Those are the kinds of questions that interested me, particularly in this experiment. So the books have never been static. The history of books, uh, really going back to Gutenberg, but forward through the 1960s and 70s to the present, has always been one of re constant reinvention. And so the arrival of new media, in the case of the 50s and 60s television, or in the case of the 1990s and 2000s, um, you know, digital media, uh, is always producing a kind of perturbation, a kind of disturbance vis-a-vis -vis print. And that disturbance produces new forms. It engenders innovation. And I think in the 60s and 70s, um, the Electric Information Age book was an example of a, a, one of those perturbations, one of those disturbances. Uh, and it's certainly one that begins to prefigure some of the features of the media regime that begins to, I think, become almost dominant in the 1990s and certainly into our own era, where the meshing of print and, for instance, text and image has become such a kind of systematic feature of different communications models, particularly the magazine, for instance, if we take that as an example. Um, so uh, you could say that people were dreaming of a kind of what, what Alan Kay would call a dyna book, a kind of elect electrical book already when they were experimenting with this kind of montage collage based form of televisual paperbacks in the late 60s and early 70s. And that's one of the reasons I'm interested in this phenomenon, clearly. And I think the whole question of what is an electronic book is very much an open question today. Most e-publishing um, is of very little design interest to me. I, I think it essentially is backward looking. But of course, the real potential of tablets or of other kinds of devices as readers, the real potential of the e-book to become something very different with respect to what we understand as a book, a printed book. Um, that's, I think, still very much a future project. Uh, there's some very rich experimentation going on among designers with trying to really think through what an e-book could be, books that adapt themselves to where you're reading them, what angle you're reading them at, to your eyesight, to a whole series of user initiated uh, constraints or possibilities. Uh, that seems to me a very rich area for future development. But I think we're really at the infancy of the ebook. Um, and uh, I've been particularly interested in a kind of perverse way almost in the whole question of the redesign of paper books almost more than ebooks, even though I've in my own work experimented with hybrid models. For instance, books that are printed books that um, expand out into a web repository that's a kind of a part of the book, maybe with some overlap between the two, the, the two elements. I've also experimented with divergent scenarios where the book is a separate object, but it has this sort of world that's where the content doesn't overlap that's supported on a website. I've also experimented with books that have QR codes and or barcodes that use sort of transfer devices, mediating devices like smartphones or tablets. Uh, I think the whole question of what those genres are going to look like is an open question.